and welcome to our second and final Patreon collab for 2024. My Patreon collabs are where my wonderful patrons and I vote on a theme and each create a doll based on that theme. The theme we voted on this time was called Mystical Oracles. An oracle refers to a priest or priestess or a type of medium who can tell the future or prophesize. The term oracle is also used when referring to a deck of cards used for divination, sort of like a specialized tarot deck. So this theme gave us a wide variety of options, such as crystal seers, or tarot readers, or ancient priestesses, or modern mystics. Patrons came up with a great variety of unique characters. Make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video for a closer look of each of their dolls, along with information on where you can find more of their work. For my doll, I struggled being inspired at first. I made a couple of tarot-themed dolls for a show that I did a couple years ago, so I wanted to go in a different direction. So I decided to do a little bit of research by taking a peek at some social media accounts of some of the modern day intuitives and psychic mediums, tarot readers, and I found a common theme amongst many of them that they believe that we're currently in the time of the divine feminine rise. So I chose the goddess Hecate from Greek mythology. She's the embodiment of feminine power, mystery, and transformation. She's associated with magic, witchcraft, the night, ghosts, and necromancy. She's often depicted as a mysterious and powerful figure. She's commonly portrayed as the triple goddess, representing maiden, mother, and crone, symbolizing her connection to crossroads and transitions. And she is revered as a protector and a guide. She's frequently shown holding torches, snakes, a dagger, keys, accompanied by dogs, her influence has persisted in modern interpretations of mythology and witchcraft. Learning all this about her gave me inspiration to create a version of my own. So I haven't used a Clio in a while, so I decided to go with her. I'm thinking this might be a, Gen a G2 Clio, but I'm not entirely sure. I did some carving before a video um, of her lip because I was going to use her for another project. Um, but I just carved down the bottom lip a little bit and sanded it down. And then um, I rooted her with some alpaca uh, fiber because I wanted her hair to kind of lay flat in some areas and I wanted it to be really wispy and sort of wild and, um, you know, f f kind of fly away. So I started out uh, with giving her some highlights. I wanted to maintain the same skin tone, but I just like to give a boost of the highlights. And when the skin is slightly darker, I don't use white. Typically I'll use this like a peachy tint. And then going in under her eyes just to do some shading. I want to give her just a little bit of um, darkness under her brow line. I use pan pastels mainly, uh, but you can use any kind of uh, pastels. The softer the better. Throughout the whole process I continue to uh, add more to the highlight area as when I uh, add some sealant and it's, it's good to just keep building up that color. I haven't done any sealant yet. I usually do uh, one layer of every, as much as I can possibly do on the eyes, the lips, the face, and then um, and then I'll give it a layer of sealant. As you can see here, the weather here is pretty cold. Depending on how the weather is, whether it's uh, high moisture or um, or the you know high temperatures, um, any kind of drastic kind of weather can have an effect on the sealant and here it's been pretty cold and I think that's why the sealant wasn't working f very well for the first coat. Don't get frustrated. I usually just push it the best that I can with that first coat. Just do what I can and then usually by the second or third coat things start to work out a little bit better. You can start getting that color build up. I like to blend lots of colors around the eyes. I'm using some blush color around the cheeks and brow bone and a little bit of yellow in there as well. Now onto the lips. Being that I carve them, it's giving them this nice shape that I'm just going to kind of follow. And 
And if you've been following me for a while, I usually do the lips a similar way each time as far as how I build up the color. I, I usually go in with the pastel first to give the general uh, shading and then I clean it up with the lines with the pencil afterwards. And I do as much detail as I can and then when I seal it, I go back and do more detail. So at this point I've given her a layer of sealant, I believe, and now I'm just adding some more shadow. And yeah, you can see that second layer of sealant did really well with the uh, allowing me to go in with some more white and it gave it a, a nice pop. I decided to give her some purple eyeshadow because the colors that I chose for her costume were purples and then highlighting it with some yellow just to give some make the eyeshadow a little bit more interesting. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, this second layer, I did this all in real time for the November uh, close-up clip or level up lesson, one of the rewards, I believe it was November, might have been December, but it was one of the most recent clips. Um, it's called the second layer and it's I did this all in real time and talked through uh, how I was shading and what I was doing for that one. And I'm adding some highlights in certain areas, being precise as to where I put them. Now I'm adding some shading around the eyeballs, just making them more round looking. So adding some shading to the corners and kind of giving, giving it a, a round shape look instead of just a flat white. And I'm using like a blue-gray pencil to do that. For her eyebrows, I go in first with the this really tiny flat brush and shape them and then I'll erase them to clean them up and then I go in with a real sharp pencil to add the individual hairs. I was finding a, a mixed information on what color her eyes were, so I, I found some that said that Hecate's eyes were supposed to be green, so I just went with that. I thought it would look well, look good with the purple. I mainly use Derwent watercolor pencils on my face ups, but sometimes when I want the color of the eyes to really pop, I go in with my um, Caran d'Ache. It's a more of a um, water soluble, which isn't, it's more of like an ink kind of watercolor than just watercolor. And it works, it, it doesn't uh, layer very well, but it does um, give a nice pop to the color, it makes it really, really bright. So you just have to be cautious of how you use it because if you start to layer then it kind of picks up the layer before it after you like if you put on one layer and then seal it and then try to go on top of it it kind of scrapes it off I've, I've just found I've had some difficulty with layering on it but it does work really well for giving some really bright bright colors 
To start with the costume, I made a, a bead crown and um, I strung up some um, jewelry wire with some beads and wrapped it around a base of a thicker wire. And my goal was to make it look like one of those, I don't know if you've seen on Pinterest, they have these uh, like crystal crowns where they use like real crystal points and wrap them around the wire onto a crown. And I, I wanted something similar to that where it looked real kind of natural. So for the costume, I just went through some of the purple fabrics I have, and then I came up with this robe to start. I wanted like a real deep V for the front, where I would just put some sort of corset or belt around the front. So I tried different fabrics to see what would look best up. I really wanted to use some of these velvets that I have that are so pretty, but they were just a little too thick. So ultimately, I went with like a belt with an emblem on the front and that I embellished, and then... Um, and then just added some of that velvet tr as trim, made her some shorts and some tights. And uh, so you can see I added some uh, gemstones to the belt and uh, to the trim that I added. So I wanted to give her sort of like a cape with this sheer fabric. I got a couple of, I have some jewelry supplies, so the, I got these jewelry hooks and I cut them down to use the little... Uh, beads and the, the rings at the bottom and I wanted to put the bead on and then the ring and then attach it to the dress and to do that I just put a crochet needle through the bead and pulled the fabric through and then I glued the little ring thing through it just uh, use some like Gorilla Glue and just stuck that through and then I cut down the fabric that was sticking out and this is like a polyester type fabric so I was able to use a lighter to melt it down a little bit so I did that to each end of this fabric and then I hooked it to her back and I just wanted sort of like a cape that kind of hung as like a cloak down her arms and it worked out perfect So I used some um, Monster High or Ever After High boots and embellished them by using some of the fabrics I glued down the front, just layered up some of this fabric that I tore and then some vinyl over top of it. I used fabric glue to connect the fabrics together and then some Gorilla Glue to add it to the boot itself. I guess I used like a super glue adhesive. Then I added some velvet to the top. And then they didn't look quite finished, so I went back and got some of these little embellishments that I collect and found some that matched up and, and added them to the top and the bottom of the boot with some more glue. You can find these at like jewelry supply stores or craft supply stores. I got them at like a, a bead show convention. And I go like, it's like three times a year I go and they always have a couple of booths that have things like this. I don't know what they really are used for, but I, I use them as embellishments on my dolls and they work great. I just kind of cut them off. They're sort of like an aluminum, but a little bit harder and you can bend them pretty easily. And then I just added a couple of gemstones to those as well. I 
I ended up painting the rest of the boot just because I didn't want that kind of shiny plastic look. It just helped them look a little bit more matte and sprayed them with some sealant. I also wanted to give her the key since Hecate is known to have a key, like keys as one of her symbols. So I had previously used some resin. I have a key mold and used some resin to make a little key. And so I hooked that to the chain and added it to her belt. And now this is kind of an odd way to make this, but <laughs> I decided to make a snake because that's another one of her um, like symbols and, and things that she's seen with as a snake. And to do that, I have some of this. Um, this is warbler. There's a few different kinds of warbler. This one is kind of thin and um, melts very easily and sticks together very well. And I just heated it up with a lighter. And as you can see, as I work, you can see that it starts getting dark um, just from the flame. And um, as I go, I just keep adding pieces to build up um, the snake. And I did it this way because I wanted the snake to not be breakable. I didn't want to make it out of ceramic or out of like clay so that it would break. I wanted something that I could wrap around her and not worry about it cracking on my customer since I sell my dolls. And I thought that Warbler would work great for that. And it did. It turned out really good. So I just kept shaping it. And not, not getting it too hot that I would burn my fingers, but just enough that it would um, be uh, moldable. And I just kept rolling it to roll out the, the lines or marks. And then it, it did keep this. Another thing that's good about this kind of warbler, it has a natural sort of scaly look to it. So I tried to keep as much of that as I could while kind of smoothing out the seams and then just added pieces to the areas that were a little bit too thin and tried to get it into the shape of a snake. I'm really surprised that this idea turned out as good as it did. because these were just scrap, piece, scrap pieces of warbler that I have, obviously. And then I just built some up into the shape of the snake's head. And of course, adding a tongue. <laughs> Sorry about going off camera like that. So I sort of made a hole in it so I could push the warbler into it and then just heated it up so it all melted together and just kind of tugged on it to make sure that it would stay steady and then cut it into the notch that at the end of the, uh, with an X-Acto knife. So when it was all the shape that I wanted, I just kind of warmed it all up to that it, to the point that it would be bendable, and then just wrapped it around this doll to, um, and then held it in place while it cooled to get it into the shape that I wanted. I used these acrylic paint pens to um, paint the tongue and some eyes, and then I also painted the snake itself um, I did the underside just like a lighter pale color and then I did some green on the top here um, it looked okay uh, but then when I looked at it overall against the doll later it uh, looked you couldn't really it didn't pop from the doll so I, I later I added some mica powder and gave it like a green metallic -y look so now I'm going to, I decided later to make a staff or a, a torch because that's one of her symbols as well. Uh, and to do that, I use this, I have a bunch of these plastic kids paint brushes that I use for a lot of um, like staffs and things for dolls. I just take out the brush part 
And then I'm using some more of these embellishments. I'm just cutting it up so I can roll it together into a cone and put it at the top where the flame would come out. And then later I'll use some resin to seal up those areas where the um, metal would be so it doesn't, you know, isn't get snagged on anything. Since I'm using the resin, I can just use some craft paint and not worry about chipping. Adding some glue, I decided to add some beads to give it some more uh, like interest, not just the plain staff. I later added a couple of more to the bottom, different uh, smaller ones. I'm using this wax, it's like a silver wax, and just going back over to give the staff a silver look. And there you can see the other beads that I ended up adding because it just didn't, it just looked a little too plain. So putting the wax all over, and then I go back and add a little bit more of the black paint into some of the crevice areas to make it aged a little bit. And then for the flame, I ended up um, using orange to do this off camera, but I'll show you what I, uh, with this, this is sort of like a yellow, but it turned out to look more green when it was up against the purple. Um, but basically I, I, it's like a, a film and I've been asked before when I use this on another project where I got this, but I, I ended up, I got this at like a, a flea market or a thrift store or something and it's just, it, there, it, the box wasn't even labeled, so I don't know really what it was used for. It's just some sort of film, and um, I, you, it just melts, and so I just use it for um, things like fire or like things like this. So I just heat it up with a candle, wearing a mask, of course, while I'm doing this because I don't don't know what it's made of, and um, I just heat it up and kind of pull it out into the shape of a flame. And there you can see I switched over to orange because I thought that would look a little bit better. And then I glued it into the staff. It ended up not staying very well, so I used resin. And then I got some white resin. This is sort of um, a it's sort of a transparent white. It doesn't get too opaque. And I um, made some little marks on it, like lines, to make try to make the flame look a little bit more natural, and build it up into like a, a wider, uh, a, le a little bit less flat. So once I did that, uh, I added a clear resin to the entire staff and flame. Oh, and here I just wanted to add a little bit more embellishments to the sleeves of the dress. Moving on to her hair, I added a little bit of uh, product to it. I like to add just a little bit of mousse or some gel just to make sure that it holds the curl or flat iron or whatever it is that I do to it. In this case, I decided to give her a layered cut. I wanted her hair to look sort of windblown, fly away, like in a lot of the pictures of Hecate where she's um, just kind of looks powerful and her hair looks a little bit wild. So I just pulled up her hair um, to trim it into layers. Then I went through it all with a flat iron. And then I added some like waves with a metal chopstick that I heated up with the flat iron and then picked it out. So it looks like, like I said, just kind of uh, untamed.
and I just kept pulling out the curls um, to pull back her length and make them not so tight but also you know give her like the feathered look Then I just attached her crown with some thread. Just attaching it to some of her strands of hair to hold it into place. And so this is the final look. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Instagram to see all of the dolls that I make. I try to make about four dolls a month so I haven't been able to make very many YouTube videos so I show all the dolls that I make there um, I am however going to make some changes in 2025 that may or may not include some more YouTube videos if I can work it in so um, again follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of those dolls again check out the gorgeous work from my wonderful patrons and make sure to check out their social media accounts to see more of their work and thank you so much to all of my patrons who participated and the, to those who supported us in this collab. See you all next time. Bye.